Sri Lanka was amongst the movers and shakers in the Global Network Readiness Index, or NRI, released by the World Economic Forum last month. We are now ranked 66th in the world, which is six places higher than in the previous two years and 20 slots ahead of where we were five years ago. How important are these findings for our ICT hopes? What can we learn from this? And is there room for improvement? Here's Ramesh Shanmuganathan, Executive Vice President and Chief Information Officer of John Keels Holdings with insider insight into those issues. Good to have you on Benchmark, Ramesh. Welcome. How are we as a nation faring on the IT and ICT fronts? It's faring pretty good. I think if you, in retrospect, if you look at the past decade, I think we had made some tremendous progress in, in, uh, in, the, in, in IT and especially as, as a nation. But uh, it's always good to take a perspective in terms of regional context. Uh, from a IT enabled nation's point of view, Sweden tops the list and uh, Singapore and Hong Kong being eighth and ninth, and we had about 63 and India said 58. Though India said 58, you would appreciate that they have made a, a landmark for themselves in IT, and we haven't. And there are factors uh, which impacts us on, on that front. If you look at, we are a, a small economy. We are about a, a 64 billion or 48 billion, and India is about 1.4 trillion. Sometimes these uh, statistics are misleading if you don't put it in context. And if you put it in context, I'm sure that we made progress, but it's not sufficient. We need to, we need to look at, uh, uh, significant investments in IT because if even if you look at from an emerging market point of view, from a little bit of research that I've done, it's about 10% of the GDP which nations are investing on IT. And on, on uh, pretty mature markets, it's about 3%. And we add about not even 1%. So taking off from what you just said, what are the emerging trends in ICT? And most importantly, is Sri Lanka ready to embrace them? Consumerization of IT. I think IT uh, given another five years is going to be in everything and anything, right? And that's the extent that IT is going to blend with uh, the society and what we do. Uh, we don't have an option. And uh, it's important for us to, uh, I think, uh, understand that in context and create awareness and make IT an integral part of our education system as well. Because uh, why I'd say so is if you look at all of us know Facebook for what it is, and it wasn't there two years back. The entire population of Facebook put together is about fourth biggest nation. So that's the kind of uh, dramatic and disruptive shifts that technology can bring in. And if you're not aware of it, and if you don't facilitate, that we are going to be challenged. Uh, so there are a lot of underlying technologies which facilitates for IT consumerization. And uh, you would very soon see phones which are flexible, made of flexible paper, uh, which is with transparent electronics. You will see a glass in front of you, could be an interactive television a touch screen in a mode of uh, transmission because technology is going to be so commercialized. Uh, you would see that it's going to facilitate a, a, a different uh, lifestyle. And also another research that I've, I've looked into says in another 10 years, an average person would have 10 jobs because the world is going to be so much automated, you won't have an eight hour job. So you need 10 jobs to fully fill an eight hour. So that's the kind of dramatic uh, things that we are in for, which is powered by technology. According to the Global Network Readiness Index released last month by the World Economic Forum, Sri Lanka was amongst the movers and shakers. We are now ranked 66th in the world, which is six places higher than the previous two years and 20 slots ahead of what we were five years ago. Now, from an ICT context, how important are these findings? It is, it is uh, very important and it's very encouraging uh, to say the least. But if you just dig a bit deeper, uh, I think if you look at the penetration of internet or of it even basic things like PCs, uh, we are at about even less than 15%. In the Western province, it's about 20%. And next is Central provinces, which is at about 10%. And OY is at about 04 But if you look at electrification, is people say electrification is, is a cost, but it's not. Even in regions in Sri Lanka where it's electrified, PC penetration is very abysmally low. As a nation, we are spending less than 0.5% of our GDP on technology investments. Is that sufficient if we want to be, uh, pro be projecting ourselves like uh, Singapore or uh, Hong Kong or, or uh, Dubai? In terms of attracting, because we are saying as an economy, we are going to be a services hub, we are going to be a knowledge hub, we are going to be a logistics hub and a transport hub. If you look at education itself, we are spending something like 3% of our GDP on the entire education system. And 
on R and D. So all of these, you know, uh, uh, are probably intertwined and probably would help if if we are to leverage technology to a great extent. And I'm I'm still saying even that 62, we should be hitting at about 30s, 40s to be, uh, you know, impactful. We take a quick break now for some messages from our sponsors. And when we return, we ask Ramesh Shanmugamadhan how much of a drawback poor English is on our ICT aspirations. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us. You're watching the Big Picture Business Program and we continue with more views and insights from Ramesh Shanmugamadhan. So while we have these grandiose dreams for of becoming an ICT hub, how about education and awareness and of course our poor language skills, don't these also play a part? We obviously boast a very high literacy rate of 90%. Uh, but then again what we need to question is whether that literacy is relevant and is it in context in terms of what we want to achieve. Because if you look at the English penetration is low, the IT penetration is low as in, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, Sri Lankan context. But if you look at underlying reasons, as I said, the PC penetration is low. The internet penetration is less than 15%. Whereas nations are investing on building infrastructures. I'm sure the road infrastructure is very vital for Sri Lanka, but similarly an information infrastructure is also very vital. People who are late starters can leapfrog in terms of the technology challenges that others have gone through. And we have the liberty. So if we invest wisely, broadband is a blessing in disguise to our nation, if we can embrace that uh, fully and even put an information infrastructure around it, we can give easy access to the masses. Then providing education access, even to distance learning, we, are, we have we are challenge in terms of ratio between students and teachers. Uh, we can put electronic material in single or whatever language and then maybe even conduct virtual classrooms. So this is where we should be going in terms of building the digital divide. Because if we, if we can't put pieces in every home, at least let's put a few pieces in, in schools and give connectivity. And then probably you will also start uh, secondary tertiary hubs in terms of economy. Because other than Western province, Sri Lanka is crying out loud for a, a secondary or tertiary economic hub. And India has about 10. Ramesh, a columnist in LMD recently said that he doesn't believe, quote, Sri Lankan universities and other post-secondary institutions presently attract and nurture future entrepreneurs, unquote. He also went on to say, and I quote, if the existence of a Sri Lankan Silicon Valley is to be a part of our future, we need specialized institutions to spring up and they must be capable of attracting local entrepreneurs with an affinity to technology and innovation in large numbers, unquote. Now, given what we have been discussing today, what are your thoughts on this? I wouldn't uh, disagree on that comment uh, at all because if you look at uh, one of the impeding factors that we have as a nation is entrepreneurial skills. Uh, because we have the intent, we want to be up there, but ultimately when you want to ask someone to put their you know, feet where the mouth is, but in, in terms of, say for example, ICT is running a program called Spiralation where they solicit proposals from uh, up-and-coming uh, graduates to look at giving them seed capital to start something. And we've had about 30, 40 of them coming and presenting to us and I, I was part of the, fortunate to be part of the panelists. Because what we see is though there is a lot of good ideas, there is no guidance in terms of making that a, a, a bankable proposal. So if you look at our education system, it's also quite archaic, mm -hmm. if I, to be blunt, because uh, we are moving in an era where you are uh, talking about information which is going to get outdated every two years. What we learn becomes irrelevant in two years. And the information doubles every two years. You have to educate people in terms of a process and how to use your competencies in terms of what they would want to do into the future. Because even a couple of the other researchers that clearly point out is that today you are training people in the universities for jobs that are not even created. Maybe enterprise should partner in partnership with uh, universities create these uh, research centers so that they, they would also have a, a bit of backward integration in terms of R&D being set up in uh, universities sponsored by the companies, which is a norm in the uh, in, in US. If you look at a lot of the R&D work in campus are sponsored by uh, the corporates because they know that they can leverage uh, that, that knowledge base as well as the research capital 
that the university is there, but they may not have the, the financial capital to do those. So, Ramesh, we have had some very fantastic individuals in Sri Lanka, but most of them have left. How is the brain drain affecting the ICT sector? Very badly, very badly, I, I should say, because uh, one of the, as I said, uh, maybe one of the reasons for the, even the previous uh, thing is in terms of entrepreneurial skills, you, you will see a lot of uh, successful uh, Sri Lankan uh, champion companies out there, outside Sri Lanka. So it's not that we, maybe we are u losing the people we should be retaining uh, in this migration process because we are not creating an enabling environment for them to operate, for them to innovate, for them to set up their own things and uh, reach out. So I guess uh, like what India is doing now, I know uh, we expected a lot of reverse migration post, post war, but that didn't probably work out as, as well as we would have wanted it to. But like what India is doing in terms of uh, NRIs, they are, they are giving them uh, concessions to invest, to do joint venture partnerships with uh, Indian companies. So that way you can tap on the Sri Lankan uh, cap human capital which is out there to leverage the economy as well. Going back to one of the topics that we were discussing, is it right that only some 10% of households in this country have access to PCs and internet in our schools is woefully low at five in 100. Now, we know that it is not the ideal situation, but given our visions for as a country, what do we need to do to fast track this rather than talking about medium and long term plans? I think uh, riding the wave in terms of how technology is shifting, I think we should forget about maybe putting, trying to put expensive or uh, you know, high-end pieces in every homes or every uh, schools, because you also see with the uh, the conversion which is happening in the world, internet is becoming the mainstream uh, technology, and your TV could be converted into a PC. You could browse the web, so the convergence of devices is happening pretty fast, and I think we should leverage that because you could easily give access to an internet at about with about a ten thousand rupee or a fifteen thousand rupee device rather than waiting for a, to put a PC on ground. So then it's about how do you then give content? So that is where maybe the institutions, education, the governments can play a role in creating the content centrally where people could access. So that is where I feel we need to change the game in terms of 10 years back we want to put PCs in every home, but today whether that strategy is relevant or we should be looking at in the, in the new wave of things whether our strategy should shift in terms of more feasible and a more compelling uh, proposition Ramesh, we have seen lots of aid coming in for ICT-related projects and initiatives. Where has that aid gone? Not too sure because interesting question which I've also probably taken up with, I, I think, different uh, agencies and institutions because I guess the aid is channeled mostly uh, expecting a bankable document from the private sector or, or vice versa in, in, or the public sector. But unfortunately, though we've had a good vision and stuff, we've not been able to execute in, in, in those initiatives and, and that it seems to be our handicap. Though we have a uh, uh, good vision of our future and in terms of we know what we need to achieve, but putting it on ground and execution seems to be uh, where the challenge is. I know Slascom has risen to uh, play a crucial role on that in trying to uh, build our exports up to a one billion US dollar by 2012. And uh, they're, they're doing a significant role, but what I'm saying is we can't leave that to an organization or an, or an agency and, you know, sit back. So as a nation, we need to, you know, take interest in what's happening and make sure that uh, these initiatives deliver, deliver what's expected of them. And that concludes our interview with Ramesh Shanmuganathan. It's time now for another commercial break. And on the other side, we take a closer look at what the public thinks of our disaster readiness with TNS Lanka. Stay with us.